Oh, there's my tape measure. Mm, okay. Good morning, I've been doing some dyeing. I am completely obsessed with chartreuse right now. I don't know why I do that. I get on these like kicks where I use a certain color and everything I do, I just really like all of these. <laughs> you guys know how I am. And then look at this one. Yep, it's Luther's favorite, you can tell. It's a gorgeous day, it's not too hot. I thought I'd weave a new set of dishcloths and I wanted to show you guys what's going on with these because I made them, I think it was two years ago in April. I'll have to look exactly how long. <laughs> They've been washed a million times, you can tell. Okay, this one is almost new. It's only been washed like once or twice. This is really what it looked like right away at the very beginning. You can see as they get washed over and over, they do shrink a little bit more. These are just fading. They're getting kind of discolored. They're getting discolored because our island is concrete and it has um, pigment in it to change the color. And as you wipe it and wipe it and wipe it, the tiniest bit comes off and just like stains basically the, um, the dishcloths, which is fine. I don't really care that much about that. It takes forever for that to happen. But what I wanted to show you is, I don't know if you guys will remember how I did my hems. I cut them really closely, but I zigzagged over the hems and they are holding perfectly fine, all of them. They all look really good. So I'm going to use that method again because I really like not having a bulky seam on these thicker dishcloths. Um, I'm actually gonna weave these exactly the same because I've been so happy with them. Not one has gotten a hole in it or a worn spot or anything like that. I mean, I'm not throwing these out. I'm gonna keep using them. I just want some new ones. So I'm gonna do them today on the deck. I've got my yarns out on the deck already. So let's go get the loom set up and get it warped. I know you guys are gonna ask, I believe this is Sugar and Cream is the name of the yarn. I actually buy it at my local Walmart um, and I just wait until they have colors that I like and then I just pick them up on the cones. But they also have a whole big selection of other colors in the smaller balls. I just don't buy those because I use so much of it for this. Also, our youngest just moved into his own place and I thought I would give them a stack as well. So I'm gonna do a pretty good long warp of them and get some new dishcloths done. Looks like this one's been used to wipe up some dye. <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's go warp that loom. Oh, you can see it's just a beautiful day. We finally have leaves on the trees. Isn't that nice? <laughs> and I am gonna go ahead and warp out here on the deck. I've done it many times before you've seen me. Gus just gave me a big kiss when I bent over to put the kettlebells down. And you guys, I actually used my kettlebells to work out with. So I can no longer say I bought them in 2019 and I've never used them <laughs> for anything but warping my loom. So I think I'm ready to go. I'm pretty sure I have everything out here. I'm gonna turn on some music and if you want further details on this um, dishcloth and all that stuff, if you want the actual talk through video, it'll be available. So if you want the actual talk through video, it'll be available on my website, Buy Me A Coffee, and you can find it there where it'll give you all the deets and all the talk through and way more specific, I don't know, instructions. Here we go. These are the, um, the different yarns I wanna use. Uh, these are all colors that are kinda like in my kitchen and in a lot of my house. Um, I'm using a seven and a half dent heddle. Here's my loom. I already set up my stand, so I just have to put the loom on the stand and it's weighted already. I'm going to clamp down the warping bar and we're gonna get going. Okay, I do have to show you guys this. So I don't know, some of you will remember Lorenzo. He was my birthday present from John. I asked for a lemon tree. So he, yes, he is Lorenzo the lemon tree. He stopped right here when he got here and he was just like a straight stick with leaves coming off of him. So all of this is new growth. 
since my birthday he got um, potted on April 5th so it's a lot of new growth in the last like six weeks I'm so excited for how good he looks I'm gonna have to learn how to prune a lemon tree I guess but isn't he doing well Lorenzo will be joining us today <laughs> he's looking hot right Right here. All right. Apparently I cut something dirty with those scissors. I can feel the dirt in them. I don't remember, but I did use them in the garden. I'm gonna just tie this off. Take off my measuring tape. Okay. I actually love how that stripe looks. <laughs> because you're getting like a weird kind of a gradient thing almost you're getting the more blue and aqua going through the limeade by, by itself and then changing down here with the other color mixed in so i love it it is on the warping bar let's go down there so it's on the warping bar i get tons of questions about this you do not have to have it perfectly one inch by one inch it's just kind of what i do because like if you think about it if you put them on a warping peg they would all be on one thing in the middle so you're just trying to do it kind of evenly as evenly as possible because okay so then what happens is I close this up so now I'll close up the bar so here's my last um, wing nut okay let me go get some mylar and we'll roll this sucker up so this is the leftover mylar I use. Um, you know, John is in the engineering field, and so different places he's worked <laughs> have been like, hey, we have all this extra, I guess they probably call it drafting paper or something. I don't know what they call it. Um, do you want some? And he always says yes and brings it home. It's good for like everything. So actually, I think I want to go this way with it. And can I trap it? Let's see, this one's down too tight. You do not have to do this, but I really like it a lot better when I do, because it's just a lot easier to handle. So it's trapped in here, and now I'm just gonna screw this down as tight as I can. Just with my hand, you don't need a tool. 
And now what I'm gonna do is unclamp and roll this up. I am gonna leave my pegs in. I used to take them out, but you really don't need to because the mylar will just go smoothly over the pegs. So it really doesn't change anything. I've just gotten um, used to leaving them in now and I'll just add a sheet of mylar as I go and roll up all the way to the loom. These pieces of mylar are 18 by 22. I'm going back enough so it'll be easy to trap. All right, so then you just trap your first piece under here and you can just start rolling it and unrolling at the same time and because your warp is like nice and smooth it'll just go on there really smoothly with great tension all you do is take your pegs out Open your bar up enough. You do not have to open it completely, just enough so that the loops will slide through. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, almost. There we go. And then all I have to do is cut these loops and slay this reed, and I'm ready to weed. Okay, I'm gonna cut and slay these before I get blinded by the sun, which by the way, I'm super happy to see. So don't take that as a complaint. Okay, so we are slayed. I have my favorite linen cording that I'm using to um, lash on. Luther's like eating a stick right now, so getting some fiber. I double it, and so sometimes you guys ask the reason why I double it. First of all, I want it to be so strong there's no chance I can accidentally break it while I'm doing it. But also, I double it because what I'll do is start with the knotted end down here and then as I go across, if I end up without enough, I can just cut another strand of it and loop them together like this. It's just much easier to add another strand without adding any kind of knot and then if I need to adjust the tension, there's no knot that has to like slide through things. There's just this smooth, smooth join that I can still adjust if I go too short. And I have done it before. If you if you watch me for a while, there have been times where I have not cut my, um, this might be one of them, where I have not cut my cord for lashing on long enough. Okay, we're gonna weave. I'm gonna weave a little bit of um, yarn to even out things and then I'll be back to start weaving the dishcloths and I'm gonna show you how it works. 
Okay, so I have woven, what, five, six rows, something like that. That evens my warp out, and I'm going to start weaving with my actual yarn now. In between each dishcloth, I'm gonna leave roughly a half an inch, and then I will show you guys how I finish them at the end. So I think we're pretty close. I think we're pretty close. I'm gonna check here. I'm gonna do one more row and then I actually decided to just weave these at 15 um, inches under tension because it's a little easier to keep track of. That's the only reason. So then this is all I do for starting the next one. All right, it's evening. And I just realized that I needed to hem stitch at the beginning and the end of each of these. So I'm starting to do that now and I'll go back and add it. I'm done. Um, you can see this big roll. I don't even know how many I got. I stopped counting and I did get exactly 15 inches out of this one, which is cool. So I'm gonna cut this and then I'm gonna show you how you can like reattach it if you need to redo or add some hem stitching. I cannot tell you how many times I have heard people say they're doing multiples or even just one thing and they forgot to hem stitch at the beginning. So this is a way that you can add it um, again into your weaving as long as it's long enough. I mean, it would have to be pretty short to not be able to do this. So I'm gonna cut it first. I'm using this tiny scissors because you know, I can't be bothered to go get a big scissors or at least the front break, I guess. So here we go. Here's, let me see, let me get in a better angle here. So one, and this is what it looks like when you hem stitch both sides. Doesn't that look pretty? All you need to do is get to your end, okay? Tuck your end underneath the apron bar. Just making sure I've got it caught all the way across. And start rolling with your break on. Ooh, I just got, found a fold on one of these. I guess I'll have to keep that one. Because you can't wind this weaving back and forth through the heddle, it won't go through because you've crossed all the way. So you're just gonna go ahead and put my break on. Um, actually, I think what I wanna do is go to the first one that's not done and I'll work my way back. Okay, so this is the first one that's not done right here. And I'm gonna put this break on and then I'm gonna pull this up and roll it back to the front. You can hem stitch while it's like flat on a table. There's no rule that says that you have to do it taut, but I find it a lot easier. So I am actually gonna hem stitch my end in. So what I'm gonna do is just go every couple of threads right next to the bottom of my weaving or in between the first two. This is a two by two hem stitch. So if I go between the first two, like every two or three threads, I don't know, three or four, groups of threads that will put that end in there and then I'm actually gonna just like sew it in so um, let's see where do I want to start right here so I'm between the bottom two threads and I'm just doing groups of two until I get to the end okay basically and at the end I'm gonna go through the loop of the weft and come out So now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that little end, it doesn't really matter. So now when I go up through this, I go up two threads over, two threads up, I am catching the end of this in the middle. Okay. 
and then I just grab my go under my two threads while the loop is like curved around on the towel and that'll give me a little knot basically Ooh, I really gave myself a lot of length so it's perfect so now I go basically diagonal two threads ignoring that end again and not counting it And then because my loop is looping around right now, I can see it, I go under two threads. I'm gonna tighten this up a little, it'll be easier to see. Okay, so with the string down, you go diagonal two threads. So it's a square of two going this way and two going this way. And I'm going under it diagonally. Okay, this is way longer than I need. So then I'm just gonna hem stitch all the way across, catching that thread. And I will need to weave in my end thread after I'm all done. unusual because usually you're cutting it off the front beam where you wind it as you weave but because I had to redo those hem or go back and do the hem stitching I'm gonna be unwinding off the back beam kind of strange but um, I'm done so they're not I don't know how different they'll look we'll just have to see we're gonna count this is four five oh this one's cool six seven eight nine i love those ten eleven i got eleven of them I'm gonna quick change my thread to something that's closer to matching. It does not need to be perfect on these. It's gonna kind of disappear as the yarn blooms. It'll like bloom shut kind of over the thread. So I'm just gonna look for something that kind of like coordinates. Here is my collection from over the years. Uh, how's this look? I'm gonna use this. Philip Bobbin. When I was sewing COVID masks, John bought me this whole little case full of bobbins so I could just fill myself a million of them. And it was so handy. Um, this is actually a baby lock machine, but they're made by brother and they're so easy to fill bobbins and um, thread and stuff. And then also, I've heard people say sometimes their automatic bobbin winder doesn't fill their bobbins very well. I have had this machine since my son was a baby, he's 24, and I have never had a problem with the bobbins. As long as I do it correctly. All right, so what I'm gonna do is put this on a zigzag stitch as wide as it'll go, but kind of close together. So um, when I say that, I mean like as wide a part of a zigzag, you know, the zigzag's gonna go across here. I make that as wide as I can, but then I make it so that the distance between each of the zigzags is a little bit less, but not super close. I mean, I definitely don't want a satin stitch, so Basically on my machine, it'll be a little less than halfway from the furthest apart to the closest apart. All I'm gonna do 
is take do the zigzag right over hang on let me come in close on my um there we go right over my hem stitch and I'm going to go all the way basically into this bottom edge of it I want the needle to keep stabbing into the middle of that yarn and then go across as much as it can on here and just it's I actually want it to sew into the yarn not around the yarn okay so I have my stitch width as wide as it'll go and my stitch length um like a little less this goes from one to four so or I'm sorry from zero to four so I have it set like just about a two it's just a hair above a two Right. So I'm going to show you really close. I don't even know if you'll be able to really see because I can't really see it with my, I really can't see that. See, I really like my old metal yardstick a lot better, but I'm going to use my quilting template. This part is so, so easy. There we go. Now you can see all the fun stuff <laughs> and all the mess also, not going to lie. All right. So I just start at one end, lay it out flat, and I like to keep this, I probably have, I don't know, a quarter inch, maybe three eighths of an inch long. I'm doing this backwards, so it's a little bit of a challenge, but I keep the fringe really short when I do this. The reason I like my metal one better is because I feel like this one slips a little bit more. But it's all right. Okay, so then you just get those. On the end, that's as tricky as it gets. All right, so because I leave only about a half an inch in between the two towels or two dishcloths, you can see. Um, it's really not hard at all. So I just lay down my template or straight edge or whatever. Okay, so just get it lined up. This thing is pretty new, so it's really sharp. And then, basically we're done. We just gotta wash and dry them. Let me cut these up and I'll throw, we'll throw them in the wash. It's the next day. They're done. John and I had some stuff we had to get done last night, so I left him in the dryer overnight because that is, that's the kind of person I am. I'm just telling you. I'm gonna give you finished sizes. I'm gonna show you what they look like. Now, it's important to remember they will shrink a little bit more over the next probably like two washes. I'm sorry about the wrinkles. I just can't bring myself to iron a dishcloth. So, uh, hang on, let me actually, film it down on the table so you can see it better. So it is kind of important to remember that the first time you wash them, they will give off a lot of lint and they will shrink a significant amount. This is the one with the like darker green and white and blue stripe. And then I'm gonna show you the other one. Okay, so this is the other one. After one wash, it is about 12 inches wide, which is actually what I was trying to go for, so that's pretty good. I'm gonna guess it's just a hair longer. Yep, looks like 13 inches long. So again, they will shrink a little bit more over the next two washes, and then I wanted to show you guys something that happened last time. It is not unusual. So see right here where some of these diagonal, you can see a diagonal line instead of a a line that's either horizontal or vertical see these right here that's called tracking it's pretty normal it's not something that I do on purpose there's some tracking here it is something that I get every time I weave with this um, particular yarn as warp and weft and I actually really like it but some people don't like it but I just wanted to let you know that you might get some tracking if you try this project here is the whole finished stack I am not going to keep all of these I'm going to keep like four 
Um, I really just don't need 11 new dishcloths. <laughs> hope you'll try these maybe. Um, they make a great gift, I think, for anybody who's just moving into a new place or even a bridal shower with like a glass pitcher filled with lemons and a, a lemonade recipe and like a wooden spoon. Wouldn't these make a nice gift that way? So I hope you'll try them out. They're awesome just for your own kitchen. They just wear really well, much better than the cheap junk you can find like in a grocery store or even the um, like big box stores. I hope you guys have a great week. I will see you Sunday for sure. And I am working to try and see if I can manage a build a bat on probably YouTube live on Friday. I'll let you guys know though in the Facebook group. Have a great week. Thanks. I love you. Bye.